Okay, so in lesson 6.3, we are going to be using the same properties of parallelograms, but now, instead of being given a parallelogram and applying the properties, we are going to use the properties of parallelograms to prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So the first theorem is just the converse of the opposite sides theorem we covered in the last lesson. And it states if both pairs of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent, then that quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So opposite sides must be congruent for the shape for the quadrilateral to be a parallelogram. And I have a little typo here. It should be BA is congruent to CD. BC is congruent to DA. That makes ABC a parallelogram. Next theorem, consecutive angles. If an angle of a quadrilateral is supplementary to both of its consecutive angles, then that quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So if A plus B is 180 and B plus C is 180, C plus D is 180, D plus A is 180, then it's a parallelogram because A must be supplementary to both B and D to make that quadrilateral a parallelogram. And that would make those opposite sides parallel because A and B and A and D are both what we call same side interior angles. Okay, same side interior angles. Make those opposite sides parallel. Make that quadrilateral a parallelogram. Then the last one, opposite angles converse. If both pairs of opposite angles of a quadrilateral are congruent, then that quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So opposite angles, both pairs of opposite angles must be congruent for that quadrilateral to be a parallelogram. So in example one, we are going to find values of x and y that make a quadrilateral a parallelogram. So first we'll find the value of x. The angles that contain the measures that have expressions with x in them, f and g, those are consecutive angles, which means f 4x plus 13 plus g, 12x plus 7, equals 180. Consecutive angles must be supplementary for a quadrilateral to be a parallelogram. So this becomes 16x plus 20 equals 180. So 16x equals 160. x must be 10. In the same way, E and H are consecutive angles, so they must be supplement supplementary. So 3y minus 2 plus y plus 10 must equal 180. So 4y plus 8 equals 180. 4y equals 172. y equals 43. So consecutive angles, both pairs of consecutive angles must be supplementary for that triangle to be a parallelogram. And you can always substitute values in to test your solutions to see that you got the correct values. So this is a good chance for you to get some practice applying these properties. So for the guided practice, this is a good chance for you to try, try to practice another property of parallelograms to prove that that quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Find the value of y to make that, a, that makes that a parallelogram. So for this guided practice, it would make the most sense to take P, Q, and S, R and set them equal to each other because those are opposite sides. That allows you to solve for X, which if you substitute your value of six as X into P, S, that makes P, S eight units long, which makes Y eight. So y is 8 in that situation. You need to find x in order to find y in this problem. So moving ahead, we have another property, the diagonals of a parallelogram. This property states, or this theorem states, that if the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So that's another one we've covered before. Diagonals must bisect each other for a quadrilateral to be a parallelogram. And then the last theorem is one that's new. And this one states that if, if one pair, if one pair of opposite sides 
of a quadrilateral is both congruent and parallel at the same time, then that quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So you are looking for the congruent symbol and the parallel symbol, those little arrows, on the same pair of opposite sides, okay, to make that quadrilateral a parallelogram. So we're going to practice these. Example two practices us understanding the diagonals must bisect each other. If the diagonals bisect each other, that means Fn must equal Nd in length. So the equation I set up is 5x minus 8 equals 3x. If I solve that, I subtract. I could subtract 5x from both sides. Negative 8 equals negative 2x. x ends up being positive 4. If I'm not 100% confident that I solved that correctly, you can always substitute your value back in to see if it holds true this theorem of diagonals bisecting each other. So I should be able to substitute into Fn, substitute into Nd, and get the same output. So if I substitute 4 into Fn, that's 5 times 4 minus 8, which is 20 minus 8, which is 12. If I substitute into Nd, I do 3 times 4, which is 12. So I know I did it right because those outputs match up of what I inputted for 4. So the last example, which I kind of made a typo, it's not example 2, this is really example 3. Um, the last example is probably the hardest because you have to be able to prove the quadrilateral is a parallelogram based on just this information. So in part A, you're given that A, B, and C, D are congruent, opposite those one pair of opposite sides are congruent. You're also given that angle A is 50, angle D is 130. So those are supplementary because 50 plus 30 is 180. So we're just saying, can we prove that it's a parallelogram? In this case, I would say yes, because one pair of opposite sides is both parallel and congruent. And the reason AB, and I'm going to write this on the side, the reason AB is parallel to DC is because A and D <coughs> are supplementary. Which makes AB parallel to DC. So that's that last theorem, the new theorem we talked about. One pair of opposite sides is both parallel and congruent. For part B, if we look at this closely, part B, that is not enough information to prove those, um, that that quadrilateral is a parallelogram. And we do have pairs of sides congruent, but we do not have two pairs of, and I'm going to write this in all caps, two pairs of opposite sides aren't congruent. That's what we'd be looking for here. Because HI and J, sorry, HI and HK are not opposite, KJ and JI are not opposite. So they're congruent, but they're not opposite from each other. So the congruent sides must be opposite from each other to make that a parallelogram. So B is a no. Um, and I'm just going to go through the guided practice, too, because I feel like I just want to explain these so you have some references to go off of, so when you practice, it's not quite as confusing. But if you go to part A in the guided practice, in this case, this is another one where I would also say no, because really only one pair of opposite sides is parallel and the other is congruent. So from what we've talked about, both pairs of opposite sides need to be parallel, which isn't the case here. Both pairs of opposite sides need to be congruent, which isn't the case here. So those are two different cases where this would be a parallelogram. It doesn't fit either of those cases. Or one pair has to be both parallel and congruent. In this case, one pair is parallel, the other is congruent, not a parallelogram necessarily. And then the last one in B, um, this one is a parallelogram. 
This one is enough information. And the reason being is because AN is parallel to LD and um, AN. Sorry, I already did AN. AL is parallel to ND. By alternate interior angles. So there are two pairs of parallel sides. So there are two pairs of parallel sides in that, par or that quadrilateral. So that is a parallelogram. So this part I think is the hardest because it's the most open-ended with what you could use as an explanation. But be prepared on the quiz because I'm going to ask you yes or no and then to explain whether it's yes or no. So either way, whether it's yes or no, enough to prove a parallelogram, you would have to give me some sort of explanation. So you're going to need some practice on this to be fully prepared for the quiz. And we will review this before the quiz, but this is probably the toughest type of problem I would give you because you are forced to explain in full sentences what you mean by yes or no.